and you can see how easy easy it is and uh, uh, just a normal you know day uh, day on the job is to create another v variable right so if i say integer um um, dummy, I guess, you know, I really don't know how to name them, but uh, another variable which I will simply initialize with zero, I kind of routinely initialize my variables with zero, uh, then I can say, um, of course I can print the size of dummy, uh, but what I'd like to do is to have another see out statement is, and say that dummy is uh, located at and print where it's located. So if I say dummy here, uh, it's going to display its value, but just like size off, which looks a little bit like a function call with parentheses, but uh, technically it's an operator, uh, uh, for addresses, uh, taking addresses or asking your objects what's your address in memory is uh, uh, so extremely popular that it uh, was uh, uh, there is a punctuation character dedicated to just asking objects what's your address. It's simply the ampersand, right? The ampersand w which looks a little bit like an A which stands for address off, okay? So um, in other words, uh, this is uh, uh, this is uh, an operator which essentially takes a look at something that represents a chunk of memory and tells you what that address is. Let's try this, right? If I build this and just uh, one more time, let me scroll this up so you can see uh, where I'm going with this. Control F5, run it, and there you go. Uh, not a surprise, the address of dummy is printed in hexadecimal format because uh, because uh, sometimes uh, when you uh, print, um, uh, I mean, just hexadecimal format is much friendlier than a decimal format for printing addresses because there is much more consistency in representing uh, addresses of locations using hexadecimal notation, right? But you already know that uh, that by looking at this, I could have converted the binary number in an instance. In an instant, I can just look up at my table for every single digit and replace C and 6 and D and F, all of this replaced by an equivalent a pattern of zeros and ones, which is four bits, okay? And quickly convert this uh, 46FD6C to uh, a binary equivalent if I wanted to. And then I could basically copy and paste it to the cal calculator and find out what that was in decimal world. But uh, it's not very meaningful at all, um, except that it's a, it's a unique address where this variable dummy uh, exist in computer memory. Because of the uniqueness of addresses, because of the uniqueness of, like every variable has absolutely unique address, nothing else can exist there at that same address. And so uh, with uh, that respect, uh, addresses give objects in memory identities, right? So interestingly, uh, I can try something like this. Um, let me just show you a few more examples of printing. So silly right here, right? Uh, silly has its own address. And any other object has its address. And of course we can, now I switched over to main function because I want to work with silly, but I'll use the same location to, uh, to print uh, the location of STDC out. STDC out is a fancy object, right? Because it can do some really interesting things for you, but it's just another variable which has this kind of fancy name. But just uh, as promised, you can take, uh, you can take its. Uh, I don't know why I'm printing too many columns here, but you can you can take you can use its name and say, "Hey, where are you located?" And it's going to tell you because the address does exactly that. It just goes to the object and finds out where that is. So let's save this. 
uh, compile, oh, it didn't like something. I got an error. Oh, I'm still running my program. That's why it's not it's not happy to replace it, replace it with a new version. But let's do it. Build. Right. So we're going to run it. And you see that uh, dummy is here. Uh, right, silly is over there, and uh, C out is uh, someplace else. They all come from real memory. They all uh, alloc use allocated memory as a resource, and uh, those memory locations are absolutely unique. Okay, so so essentially nothing else can exist at this location but C out. Nobody else can get there. Uh, addresses of objects in memory are perfect candidates to provide some unique identity, right? Identity in terms of, like, if you had two copies of objects similar to C out, you can always take their addresses and compare them and say, is it the same variable or different variable? And if the addresses are different, of course it's a different variable. But sometimes you can have multiple names for variables and uh, sometimes you can find out whether it's the same variable or different and again a topic uh, to discuss some other uh, time I'd like so we're not done with addresses just yet I just wanted to show you a few more interesting um, interesting findings if you will one more, um, one more uh, print statement like this, and you can see I routinely copy and paste things uh, to make uh, things faster. Uh, but we said uh, uh, a while ago that when your program is in memory, right? So let me actually clean this up and just start fresh uh, right here. Um, here's our, here's the code that we have so far. Uh, and this is our main function right there. Okay, so I'll just copy and paste this to our demonstration. Here's the here's the main function. This is not the entire program, but at least this is uh, this is uh, a f a function that uh, that we have right here. Uh, and we said uh, that um, when your program loads into memory, right? Uh, it gets this uh, stack thing, which hosts all local variables. Uh, it has a heap. We're not using heap. Uh, this is where memory uh, is allocated dynamically. This is yet another area of memory that exists. Uh, global variables that we also have to discuss today, uh, globals, live in a separate segment of memory. And finally, all this, uh, you know, executable code like this uh, gets uh, into the text memory segment these are all historical names okay and uh, we're just they're just stuck right it's not called code it's called uh, text okay uh, nevertheless uh, but all of this executable code um, uh, which we refer to to as main is in computer memory. Therefore, should we be able to say where in memory is main? Where is this executable code in memory? And uh, I think we should get our, our answer. We can say uh, main is located at, and if we uh, compile this, and again, I cannot compile because I'm still running it, but one more statement to look at, one more output to look at, compile and run, there. Main is located at this uh, specific address. So executable code that is the result of us compiling and creating this program, of course, is also is, is in computer memory. And one final piece that I'd like to show you. What if I was uh, silly enough to try something like this? Uh, see how I use uh, 555 as a hard-coded value that I give to my variable? What if I wanted something like this and said, this looks like a number, so maybe it exists in some computer memory. Could I do something like this? Save it. Try building it and it fails and says the error message uh, tells me that 
uh, attempt to use address operator, which is this ampersand, on a constant, all right? So 555 is a constant integer value. Yes, it is understood by the compiler as specific numerical value, and everything is fine, but you cannot take address of it. Question why? Like, how is this number different than this number, which was just a variable name which accepted 555 very happily to accept it as a value, whereas here, if we say, all right, so is there any memory associated with the number, and we're trying to take its address, uh, is it someplace? Uh, yes? Was it ever assigned an address to begin with? I'll give you the answer right away. It's not even going to compile, because what happens is this. Let me actually start stop running previous version of this program and go back to this demonstration. And um, when in my code, somewhere in this main function, when I say um, when I say something like this, integer uh, integer x equals uh, 555, which we've tried using uh, in our code in our function, right? So if somewhere here I say this, uh, what happens is that, of course, this gets compiled, right? This is compiled. And a result of that compile is that we have some uh, uh, CPU instructions, uh, which are in form of zeros and ones, binary patterns of, you know, bytes which are understood by our, our CPU as meaningful executable commands. So guess what? Uh, these, these instructions get here into the text segment, which we already said is the place for all executable code, executable instructions. And guess what? This number, five, uh, 555, okay, actually is stored someplace directly inside one of these instructions. It doesn't have its own memory. It's just basically every constant that you use like this ends up being someplace part of the executable code and is buried inside some instruction, which can only be understood by the CPU when that instruction is actually loaded into the CPU for execution, right? So our CPU, which executes this program, basically constantly says, oh, this is my next instruction, this is my next instruction, this is my next instruction. And when it reads those instructions to execute, it finds part of that instruction, this number, number 555. Therefore, we say that in computer programming, uh, um, numbers uh, constant numerical numerical values or, or literal uh, numerical values like this don't have a storage like variables. They still have some storage in memory, but it is impossible to use them directly, right? We use them as numerical constants. It, it's very convenient and it's great to have them, but they end up being part of the instructions. And therefore, anything that can be used as a, as a, as a constant usually is a way to make your code run faster because variables require allocation, initialization, additional uh, uh, additional tasks associated with variables do exist, whereas with constants, they're, very, they're, they're extremely fast. They're getting loaded into the CPU along with uh, instructions to execute, and therefore, this is the fastest piece of this program, any constant value like this. Just to let you know. So, no, this is not possible, right? You cannot take addresses of these constants. They're just too microscopic to work with individual you know, memory locations. Uh, so we will largely ignore them. But everything else that pretty much has the name has the memory address because it's very likely is someplace in memory. And I'm doing all of these little exercises for you, for you to get a feel that things are actually coming from computer memory. How close can you get to them? Pretty close. You can say, what's your size? You can say, what's your address? 
and later on will be storing these addresses elsewhere using pointers to these ad addresses and uh, uh, use uh, all other f uh, fun things that you can do at this low level. Anyway, so this is our discussion of local variables uh, and things that we've tried uh, with them, including the sizes.